on the lawn of Mary Wilder. <laughs> and and uh, back there we visiting the courthouse today, that night, and she well remembered a trial I had in there. Uh, I was thrown in that jail, which is part of the history, and spent the night. And uh, while in there, there was an altercation took place, and my shirt was thrown off. I had no shirt on. And she was mad at me for being out all night and wanted to kill me, and, and probably should have. But how it turned out was quite wonderful. She came over and, and brought to me and my buddy a basket load of a fresh fried chicken and handed it to us to sell. And we ate that whole chicken. <laughs> and that was a wonderful event. And, and I really straightened up after that. I never was, I never was thrown in that jail ever again. <laughs> she, anyway, she was especially kind to us. She had every right just to blow my head off. <laughs> so, if you'd like to ask me some questions about old Sam Peckinpah, I'll be happy to try to answer you. He did the Wild Bunch, which uh, uh, a lot of people consider the greatest western ever made. <clears throat> and why I had respect for him, Pat and I were living here in Taos. And I got a call from a young agent. We'd already gotten rich and gone broke in a mining gig. Here's a guy that works with me here, right here. The only one left, I guess. He thinks he's older than me, but he isn't. I'm one year younger than you. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, you're a lot younger. Two years? My God, when you get to be 90, that's enormous. <laughs> well, uh, he, he was, uh, I tell you how I'm sorry getting along. He called me here. And a young agent from Hollywood, uh, he was so excited he could hardly talk. And he said, oh, the hottest director in all the world wants to meet you. Well, I had no idea who Sam Packin' Paul was. I'd never even heard of him. And uh, then he explained to me about the picture he'd made, and that they'd thrown it away in Hollywood, and that he opened it, when they opened it in Europe, in Paris, in fact. They were standing around 10 blocks to see that movie. Go and they wait all day and then come back the next day and they got it in. Well, our great studios in Hollywood heard about that and uh, they brought it back and sure enough, he became world famous and a great director. So anyway, my meeting with him, I met him at a restaurant across from Warner Brothers uh, Pat and I used to eat there, I can't think of the name of it, Polynesian they called it in those days. And I met him at noon, and uh, here's how we got along the rest of our life. His grandfather had been both a rancher and judge. And he respected his grandfather beyond all other people. The part he learned as a kid from it, and going out in the, in the woods and hunting and one thing or another. Outdoors, especially. And uh, it just happened that my grandfather was the same thing. He'd been a rancher and a judge. So immediately we had something in common. And who would know after he, he made half of the people in the film industry hate him, a few of us loved him, I was one of the few. I would imagine at the end he probably had ten friends after all uh, James Coburn was his last great friend, besides Isaiah Nelson. And uh, that's how limited his friendship was. But as far as making films that, that depicted the period of the West, not to shoot them up West, which is the whole of the world, they do it thousands of them. I love, I've read a zillion of them, I love them myself. But that's not what I write. That's what I want to set out to write. I, I was dead serious about reporting the truth in a period that his historians have neglected. I do not know why. But the time from just before World War II to right after that, we had a West that the, uh, the old cowboys were really the same, they worked the same, and then the pickup truck came after the war and started making a pickup truck. They changed the entire West forever. Instead of getting up way before daylight, riding in the dark for 15 miles across the cow ranch to uh, 
to start reading your work at daylight. That's why they just load their horses over the trailer and put them over there and start, and start from there, 15 miles say, out of the ride right there. Most people don't understand this. I'm telling you how it is. Well, okay. Now, telling you how it is, you find out that in, in the human heart and soul, we all become the same. We all eventually become the same. You have enemies, you have friends, you have this disagreement, that disagreement, things you're proud of, schoolmates, this and that, and the cowboys weren't any different. They had the same thing, except they really did a tough job for that period between the old time gunfighting West and the real West of work, of work and planning and skill to make a living. And that started ending and, and disappearing slowly, very slowly. About, I would say, about the mid-50s, it, it really started. And uh, so that's how we got acquainted. And I made one picture with him, which he tricked me into. And it, instead of just an acting job, it wound up at Slim Pickens, which I'm sure you all remember old Slim. Or, uh, Dr. Stranger, I think they were world famous or whatever. Little thing of Dr. Stranger, I was dropping the bomb. He, he had a, and uh, he was my partner. He drove the stagecoach and that. We didn't use the stunt him. And uh, they had a strap behind him. He weighed 250, 300 pounds. And my job was to ride the old shotgun here and ride behind him. And, and hold him on there because I think Sam, <laughs> I think Sam Peckinpah wanted to kill us because he kept making us make tremendous runs. And once he tilted up on his edge like this, I thought, well, we're gone. That's it. It's the end of it. And we never could get another actor back in the car. <laughs> we finally, he just ordered some good stuff to me, you see. Okay. But, uh, when I, when I lived through that film with him, and I watched him operate under uh, really strong and powerful conditions in the sense of having, the, having pressure from the producers every single day of his life. And I didn't, I, I don't see everybody else thought it was going to be a pretty good film. I didn't think it was going to be any good. I didn't, have, I didn't know how to judge it. I mean, I helped him write stuff, one thing or another. And I was babysitting old son, he had pneumonia. Then he died, lost two ribs in the half long, but he stayed there to get finished the picture. So we, through that, you can see how the friendship developed. It, it became a very deep and very risky friendship. It was very risky because I'd get blamed for things, just being with him, that <laughs> I just got to where I didn't care, you know. <laughs> I'd help him raise hell. <laughs> be frank with you. So it was a, it turned into a grand, grand adventure. I'm very, very proud of it. Yeah, any specific questions you'd like to know about him? You know, you know his pictures? Wild Bunch, Ballad of Abel Hole, Get Away. Uh, oh, Pat, do you remember some of these pictures? Right behind you. Do you remember the names of old Sam's pictures? You can. Did you do a film with Marilyn Monroe? Ma'am? Marilyn Monroe? Did you do a film with Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. The Desert <coughs> the John Wayne? No, I didn't work on it. I worked on it, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I had a, I, actually, I did it, I wrote on his, uh, his last script. His mm -hmm. son, Michael, who ran all his business all his life, we became very close friends. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, well, my father did the shooting. And he said, we don't want him to end that way. Mm -hmm. And he's very ill, and he is going to die, but he wants to, he wants to make a, a comedy. And, and that's what I was the best at. <coughs> so I worked for about three months, and desperately trying to finish that script. And, and he died. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, was a, that was some kind of experience. Yes, sir. Well, I'd like, uh, Mr. Evans, I'd like to ask you a question just about what I perceive of the themes, some of the themes of the Peckinpah films. And I think of that quote from 
uh, the Joe McRae character in Ride the High Country, where he says, I want to come into my house justified. And the theme I see of basically uh, an old Western gunfighter trying to have dignity and integrity in changing times. And I just want, that I see as a theme of Peckinpah's film, but I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Yes, uh, the last thing I had <coughs> on this book, uh, I was asked that question. Yes, just, just twice and I've been asked that question. But I, I, I grew to have enormous respect for him myself. And I admired his films deeply. And uh, the truth is, you see, as stupid as I've been in my life, and I have been in many, many dimensions, he is worshipped worldwide. They have, they, they have, in Germany, I'll give you an example, they have financed all of these documentaries that are world, worldwide. You've seen them, mm -hmm. I'm sure, because they've shown over and over. And he, and, uh, so, uh, once I had that, uh, people fly from, uh, call me, in Albuquerque, called Pat and I, and uh, from Tokyo, <coughs> and said we we read your first the first book, little, little <coughs> bit of book. I did the first book ever done on Sam Patton. About forty books in published, maybe fifty. And uh, <coughs> he said I couldn't believe it. He said, Well, I'm going to send the writers for Tomber over in Albuquerque. Yeah, I thought, oh, hey, somebody's putting me on, you know, to write a story on this guy, and it, it, it costs a lot of money to buy tickets from, from uh, Tokyo to Albuquerque and back, <laughs> and stay and, and, and work for two or three days, taking photographs and asking questions. Here they came. They did it. I still didn't much believe it, and they sent me a copy of uh, Japan, as far as Japan, it was half Sam Peckinpah. And if you, if you young enough to remember back about Esquire, it was a it was a half an inch more. It was a really it really informed in magazine. <coughs> so he is beloved. And he's ranked with the uh, what the least the greatest film director that ever lived, is Federico Fellini. And uh, I, I've loved his work ever since I first. Saw them and we studied them and studied them and loved them. And uh, he, it just turned out that in the end I found out from his sister that Federico Fellini was uh, <laughs> one of his three favorite directors in the world. So we never we never talked that. We never we shared it. Now, halfway answer your question.